Asked at six, working for a company with no senior staff or a chief executive. It sounds unconventional, but it's the reality for those working at consultancy company greater than. The company trials work habits before recommending them to clients, including having your colleagues help determine your pay. For more, we're joined by greater than partner, Susan Basterfield. Good morning, Susan. You've been trialling this. Would you recommend it? Morena, well, Chris, um, I don't know, right? I think that, you know, as I as I always say, you look at anything from 50 years ago and it's fundamentally different except the org chart. Uh, and we have to ask ourselves, why is that? And when we're looking at changing things that might help us be better in service of what we're trying to provide out in the world, uh, looking at our structures is a very significant part of what we do. And I would say recommending it to those organizations who are willing to test and experiment. And what we do is help them do that without breaking anything. Okay. I, I was going to say that you'd need some guidance because you'd be very reluctant to test if you thought you'd actually got to get through some stuff as well. What are the benefits of not having a hierarchy, having a CEO and senior managers? Mm. I mean, don't get me wrong, There, any system has a hierarchy, right? But hier hierarchy kind of uh, manifests in ways that don't, aren't related to job titles. So just kind of put that aside for one second. The benefits are is that people can actually do the work that either they derive the most joy from, uh, that they want to practice doing. Um, and that, you know, really when we're talking about um, being able to be interdependent with your colleagues, really recognizing um, the beauty of actually being dynamic in leadership and sharing the load. Is it going to work in a big organization? I think that some organizations are are so uh, set and calcified in the ways of working, mm. you'd have to be very, very careful uh, to do that. If you look at a large organization, normally the CEO is in place as the single head for the board to, you know, um, look to to uh, make sure that uh, that you know, the organization is doing the board's will. I think that it would be a very hard call for boards to decentralize and distribute that, but it's not impossible. In fact, there is an organization right here in New Zealand that um, five years ago, six years ago, the CEO reached out to me and said, Susan, I've just told the board um, that I'm retiring and I'm suggesting that they don't replace the CEO. I think that we have all the skill, uh, capability, mana with the uh, leaders here to do some work to figure out if that role can't be shared across uh, four people uh, when I leave. And sure enough, it's worked and it's been a couple of years since she's left and they're flourishing. Uh, so what sort of companies would this work best in? So I think that organizations that are already quite um, re both realistic and also understand and are able to work with uh, what we call the relational field or the fact that an organization, a company is not just the work that you do, but the relationships you have and how you get that done with your peers and colleagues. And also kind of recognize that the workplace can be a place for you to do your ongoing development, learn things, trial things, test things that, you know, if you have a growth mindset within the organization and as a human being and with your peers and colleagues, there's huge upside and potential for not just being locked into a role that is the next step or the last thing that was on your CV. I guess the flip side is the reality is some people will naturally want to leave. They'll want to be accountable or have the accountability. And there'll be others that naturally will not want responsibility. They just like going to work, collecting the paycheck, doing their thing and then going home. Yeah, absolutely. And the I think the key to that is making that explicit, right? Like, do we ever really ask or talk to our people about, you know, what's your preference? Where's your energy right now? What do you need to do your best work? And for some people, it's absolutely going to be, tell me what to do. I'm really good at what I do. I'll ask you for help when I need it. And I want to do my hours and go home and not think about work afterwards. And that's completely legitimate. But we never actually ask those questions. That's mm. what about what about in times of crises when things are really hitting the fan 
don't you need someone who can say, look, I'll, I'll be the person, I'll be the one that'll take charge here and lead here, rather than everyone yeah, sort of saying, we, we've, all got, we've all got an idea about how we're going to do this. Absolutely. And this is called the, it's a, it's called the tyr tyranny of structurelessness. And absolutely in a crisis, somebody will step up and take the lead, but they don't necessarily have to be the person that steps up and takes the lead when there's not a crisis. This is why we call it dynamic and, uh, you know, learning that somebody might be really good in a crisis. And if we know each other well enough um, and know where, you know, people's skills and talents are, then we can, we can, you know, have that experience in a way that doesn't feel um, dominating or overbearing because we are working with what we have. Mm, food for thought. Susan Busterfield from Greater Then. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Thanks. See ya. Um, Go on. I'm still, no, I'm still trying. I'm still struggling with the idea, I guess. I mean, it's, what should you talk about? It, you know, if your company has a growth mindset or individuals have a growth mindset, it's, it does require also, no it's, it seems, a certain level of interpersonal relations. Like you have to know your colleagues really well and know that you're all doing, you're all motivated by the same thing, which across like a lot of people, it's going to be quite difficult. So who do you blame when things go wrong? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But that's, that's the benefit. It's not the CEO. It's, it's, like, it's like that it's meme of Spider-Man like, working like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it could. I mean, obviously, it does work in some situations. Yeah, I mean, look, it wouldn't it? Ways work, but, isn't but it? as she pointed out, the whole thing is is actually you just ask the question, and it, you go to your uh, your worker bees, and you actually ask them, you know, what sort of system would they like in place? And of course, we don't do that. So I guess to me, that's the main point: is those discussions. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let us know. Breakfast at tvnz.co.nz. All right, Kelly Tatoni, my stay with us. We'll be right back after the break with your 6 City News. Plus, there's been another alleged sighting of Tom Phillips's police.